Our mystery guest was referred to us by Tall Glazner, and I want to thank Tall so much for sending this person along to us. And this is what I have. This is a little bit of information about him. He began playing and building dulcimers in 1980. He started performing, teaching, recording professionally around 1982. He won numerous competitions, including two national mountain dulcimer championships in 1986 and 1991. He's recorded a half dozen albums. He was born in New Jersey. He grew up in Oklahoma. He's lived in Maine, Colorado, Texas, and now he's back in Tulsa, Oklahoma. It, he took, and this is the significant part about this, he took 25 years off from dulcimering, is his word, to uh, work a real job and raise a family. And he is excited to return to the dulcimer world. He just loves this instrument. So our guest, not yet, Cindy, is Mark Tyndall. And the reason I picked back in the saddle, because he's back in the saddle, and I want to welcome him home to the dulcimer community. Mark Tyndall. Hey, Mark. Hi, guys. Well, thank you, Pat, so much for inviting me on here. This is going to be fun. I, I don't have a lot of experience doing this Zoom thing, but uh, I'm learning. So, first of all, can you hear me okay? Yes, we can hear okay, you. Okay, and let me switch to this other camera. I look all washed out on this one, but this one will look better. Dulcimer will look better anyway. Um, anything else? We get started here, I guess? Well, was there anything that I missed that I uh, that was significant? No? That's it's kind great, of the highlights. Uh, it's a great well, story, Mark, about you leaving to raise a family. We all understand that. And coming back. You're still building, though, right? You yes, bet. I just started again a couple years ago. And um, I don't mean to sound like dulcimering is not a real job. It is for some people. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> it's it just is. It's a tough way to make a living being a musician. And... Uh, so when we started a family, it was like, well, I need to get a real job. <laughs> the old adage of don't give up your day job kind of applies. I had six kids, so it was uh, quite a full and busy time of my life. But uh, I'm glad to be back kind of working my way back into the whole dulcimer world. So I really appreciate you having me on here. Um, I play a lot of stuff in four equidistant strings uh, almost exclusively now, but uh, I still can do three string, but all, all the stuff I'll be doing today is in four equidistant strings. But it's mostly D-A-D-D, -D -D. the same tuning that we're familiar with, D-A-D in -D three string, but I just like in four string. But um, if we're ready, I'll just go ahead and start. We're good there? Abs absolutely, yeah. All right. I, I mute myself so that I don't interfere with your sound. So if okay. I don't answer you right away, it's because I haven't found the button. Just cricket sound. To turn myself back on, effect, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, I thought I'd start off with just a fun little tune to play, uh, Sandy River Bell. Some of you probably know this one, and it'll help me kind of loosen up and warm up a little bit here.
that was great, Mark. I loved being able to see all the special things that you put into it. We can see your hands really well, and you've got all Good. those pull-ons and pull-offs, and yeah, great. I use those quite a lot. Um, one of the things I like about the four with this and strings is having, of course, four separate strings to work with. You can get four notes in your chords instead of just three. I like that aspect of it. But a lot of the time, I'm not even fretting that extra string in there. I'm fretting the bass string, the middle string, and the melody string that's closest to me a lot. But that second melody string is often just left as a drone. I'll demonstrate some more of that a little bit later. But uh, when I kind of got introduced to four equidistant strings, uh, oh, maybe a year or two after I'd started playing, I don't know if any of you remember a fellow from California named Jim Fury, uh, mountain dulcimer player and hammer dulcimer player. Um, I saw him play at Winfield one time, and he was getting all the sound out of the dulcimer I had not heard before. <laughs> I said, how are you doing that? I asked him, and he said, just, just separate the two melody strings, and you can get four notes and so on. That just kind of blew my mind, and I've kind of not looked back since then. Uh, so I kind of credit all this to him. Uh, getting me started down that road. But uh, it wasn't long after playing, starting to learn to play songs and learn stuff that I started writing music because there was so much that just kind of fell out of the air and worked out well on the dulcimer, just playing around with it, not really even playing a song, just playing little bits and diddlies. And some of them turned into songs. And this is one of them. This is probably the first one I wrote for four equidistant strings. It's called The Touch. Loved those dynamics, Mark. Oh, thank you. <laughs> the, oh, the loud and the soft and, oh, beautiful. Just beautiful. I think the dulcimer has such a 
sweet voice. We all know that. We all love the dulcimer. Uh, it can be a lot of different things to a lot of different people, but I like playing a lot of the slower, prettier, more chordal, uh, lots of chords uh, arrangements, uh, but also play stuff fairly simply too. Um, but one of the things I was going to show you was, uh, I think I need to tune here a bit too. There's the culprit. Um, one of my favorite melodies of all time is a melody that's named King's Fold. And uh, we probably mostly know it as the melody of a song called Star of the County Down. But the melody actually predates that song quite a bit. It's also been used for a couple of hymns. Uh, I've got a hymnal here that's got it in there. It's uh, If you see the, the uh, tune title of King's Fold, it's this melody. Um, but I was playing around with it the other day, just uh, playing it through with a little bit of reverb on through my little amp and uh, kind of getting inspired. So I came up with some different ways to play it. It's one of the things I love about the dulcimer. You can play it so many different ways. There's the old uh, standard way. <laughs> sung a lot like a, a Irish uh, tavern song so kind of like that um, but I was also playing around that's in B minor by the way if you're following my left hand any it's uh, based out of B minor scale but you can also play it with uh, DAD tuning uh, open strings here with uh, in E minor but again this is one of those cases where I like to leave that second uh, D string, melody string, open, it creates an E minor seventh chord instead of an E minor chord. There's E minor and there's E minor seventh. So I was just playing around with that and kind of came up with another way to play this melody that I love so much that uh, stretches it out a little bit too, but it sounds like this. different sound and feel to the song. Um, that's what I love about sitting around playing, started playing some of these chords. It's like, oh, that sounds like 
uh, the Kingsfold melody, Start the County Down. So let me try that. <laughs> so I have a couple of questions for you. One is, did you make the dulcimer that you're playing? Yes, I did. I'm also building again. Uh, this is a kind of a custom level one I have that's got some inlay on it, some things. It's made out of uh, rosewood, Bolivian rosewood back and sides. I don't know how well you can see this or not, but um, and the top is spruce. I normally don't care for spruce as much on the top, but this one sounds really sweet. Um, you're hearing it from a microphone just above my head here, as well as I'm playing it through a little uh, amplifier down the, the floor here, just to give a little more volume and put a, a touch of reverb on it. Does it, fact, have a, does it have a shorter DSL? This is a 27 inch DSL. Oh, okay. Um, and here's, by the way, here's what it sounds like, just the mic. And here's through the amp as well. I just get a little bigger, fuller sound for that too, for the broadcast here. Um, but yeah, I, as far as DSL goes, my opinion on DSL is that uh, shorter is, is uh, preferable to a point, and then it gets almost too short if I try to play, I played on some pretty short scale length ones and try to play up above the seventh fret and my fingers get all tangled up on each other. It's so tight up there. Um, but the main thing about vibrating string length, there's a lot of opinion out there about that. My own opinion is that uh, in a given design, so every builder builds differently, um, we're building dulcimers, but there, there are subtle differences that make the instrument sound and have a certain uh, voice to them. But anyway, the, uh, uh, the main issues are uh, the comfort of playing, so how easy or hard it is to play shorter or longer scalings, and then the sound as well. Um, those two things are a balance uh, you have to strike. I like uh, this 27 inch. Uh, any longer it gets hard to play some of these chords, and I've got pretty long stretch on my fingers. Some of those chords get harder to play, uh, but the 27 is kind of a nice happy medium. The longer you go, with scale length generally the bigger fuller sound you're going to get but the harder it gets to play and the shorter you go you you get uh maybe increased playability up to a certain point or down to a certain point i guess um but you do that at the sacrifice of sound to some degree it depends on the builder's designs and so on i am working on one that will be a, a shorter model that'll probably land at 24 and a half 25 inch uh scale length um, in that neighborhood uh, that I'll be introducing hopefully in the next several months. But I have these on my website, TyndallMusic.com, which I probably mentioned that uh, now since we're talking about the dulcimers. Um, I have two models and I have three different trim levels and the two models are like this one here is called the Serenade, which is normally tuned DAD and it's just my regular, this is, this is my dulcimer, the way I like to build them, like, the way I like this, the sound and everything. And then I also have the same model but with a slightly deeper box that is my baritone model, which I'm calling the Sonata. And my little one, when it comes out, that's going to be probably tuned to G normally, although you could do it in D as well, uh, with a shorter scale length, is going to be called the Minuet. So those will be my three models. And in each of those models, the sizes of the instruments, I have three different trim levels. Uh, one I'm calling the Essential, then there's a Premium level with some other add-ons to it, and then the Custom level for something like this, uh, or Custom Inlays, or other things that I can do. Um, the essential model is built just like the customs are, it's just without all the frills or extras. Some people really want that and want the, you know, uh, an artwork type of piece of dulcimer and others are looking for just basic playability and sound. That's my essential model there. So I'm trying to be able to do all that um, as one builder doing a lot of different, <laughs> a lot of different uh, builds there, different types to accommodate a lot of different uh, uh, tastes and opinions on, on dulcimer, so. Um, where was I gonna go next? Oh, since this is a uh, somewhat of a cowboy horse theme thing, you said back in the saddle, getting back over out of the way here too. Um, 
I recently wrote a melody. Well, let me let me back up a second. I have uh, six kids. I mentioned I have four boys, who have all grown, and married, and some are giving us grandkids already. Um, and when they were little, I actually wrote tunes for each one of them. I have Joy for James. I have John's Jig. I have Andrew's Air and oh Ben um, Benjamin. I called it Ben's Jammin. <laughs> So I have four different tunes, but uh, my two daughters that I have that followed them a little bit later, uh, I never got around. It was that time of period when I wasn't really playing much and never got around to writing something. Well, a couple of tunes just fell out of the air the other night. This had been a few weeks ago. So I came up with Mary's Melody and Hannah, my youngest, who's uh, 21 now, uh, she is an artist and she's learning to do pottery and painting and things like that. And she, her favorite flower is called hollyhock. So of course I had to call it Hannah's hollyhocks. So that's I'll play that one to close this this out today. But this one's called Mary's Melody, and it is kind of in keeping with the theme. It's kind of a slower country cowboyish waltz. So we'll see how it goes. And I I may fumble a bit through it because it's it's kind of new to me still. I got to get it in my head. <clears throat> Obviously, I still need to work on it some. <laughs> um, another part of all the music I've done that I've enjoyed a lot is uh, 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 hymns right out of the hymnal. But rather than play one you've probably heard a million times, <clears throat> I thought I'd do one that's uh, more recent. Uh, it's actually some modern hymn writers out there, uh, the Gettys, I don't know if you've ever heard of them, they're Irish uh, folks that are living in Nashville and writing a lot of uh, nice uh, praise and worship music and a lot of them to me sound like a lot of the old hymns as well. So this is one uh, I'll just play through a couple of times. Uh, I've done it at my church recently with our worship group, which has been kind of fun to play dulcimer with that uh, as assemblage of uh, musicians and singers. Uh, this is uh, In Christ Alone. Some of you are probably familiar with that.
Mark, when you were working your real job, were you also playing music in church and continuing to play? Or? Uh, occasionally, yeah. Uh, there wasn't, I didn't have a lot of opportunity to do that at that time. Mm -hmm. um, I, I run sound a lot, so I was doing that mostly uh, to fill in there where there was a real uh, need for that. And uh, we, we changed churches. We went to a new startup church, and so it was a mobile church. So it was a lot of work to do the setup each mm -hmm. Sunday and, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, tear down each week. So I, I really was more involved in the tech side of it than the uh, music side, but occasionally would get to play. Well, your um, skill set, I mean, it's, it's, you've just kept up your skill. You must have been playing yeah. for yourself, <laughs> Most, no? Mostly just in my studio room here. Just uh -huh. I, I did manage during that period of time to actually record a CD. That was my Christmas CD, uh, 2006, I want to say that was. So it's been a while back now. It seems like it can't be that long, but it is. And that was a fun project to do because I could focus on uh, arranging these familiar songs with other instruments as well as the dulcimer. So I added, you know, I had uh, David Moran played hammer dulcimer on a few tracks. I had a harp player. I had my cousin played uh, bass uh, in there, uh, some uh, fretless electric bass, which sounded kind of nice, um, but still very much featuring the dulcimer. Um, and that was a big accomplishment for me to be able to do that while working the day job. But that was the last hurrah, if you will. And I just kind of kept, you know, playing enough to keep my chops up a little bit, but uh, <laughs> mostly was doing many other things during that time. And it's all good. Uh, I have no regrets. I, I kind of wished I could have been able to continue with dulcimers through that whole period, but wasn't meant to be, and that's okay. It I'm doesn't, <laughs> glad doesn't to be here now. Yeah, it doesn't look like it hurt you at all. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. Gosh. Yeah. Um, another, I don't know how we're doing on time here either. We good? I don't want to push it over time. No, you, can, you can play as long as you want. <laughs> we're, Don't we're... say that. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, uh, I'm enjoying this too much. Um, well, another area that I, I d uh, did a lot on dulcimer was a lot of the Irish harp music, particularly of Carolyn. And I know that a number of you out there probably know at least one tune, maybe several, by Turloff of Carolyn, a blind ar Irish harper from uh, a few centuries ago, left us with a wealth of music and... Uh, a lot of those just survive in the melody only, so you have a little bit of leeway as far as what chords you put behind the, that melody because there's nothing written with all the, the chord structure, uh, just the melody. Uh, but this was one of my favorites, kind of a slower piece. Um, it sounds a little similar to some of his others that you might be familiar with, more popular ones, but uh, this is called Blind Mary, and I've always loved this one, so um, I'll give you a little taste of that. Let me retune first. There we go.
It's pretty when I don't botch it up, that is. <laughs> that's lovely. That's <laughs> lovely. I mentioned earlier that uh, that project I, I did in that interim time was a Christmas uh, project. So I thought I'd play one tune off of there. And I haven't practiced with one a whole lot, and it's probably one of the harder pieces to play well, play cleanly. So hopefully I'll make it through it. Uh, but I had the fortune of doing it with uh, Hammer Dulcimer and, if I can remember right, uh, harp or flute. I can't remember on that arrangement. It's been a long while since I've listened to it. Anyway, it was a nice play off of the different instruments. Uh, but it's uh, one I'm sure you're familiar with called Oh Holy Night. Let me get it started here. A little rusty. Lovely. It was lovely. <laughs> Somebody said, now they're ready for Christmas. <laughs> yeah. All right. That's right. Yeah. Um, well, I thought maybe I'd do one more uh, kind of 
ended up on a on a uh, upbeat note. I told you I'd play uh, Hannah's Hollyhocks, Hollyhocks for you, so I'll do that. Um, before I kind of sign off a little bit here, I just want to mention my website is tindlemusic.com, T-I-N-D-L-E, music, tindlemusic.com. And I've got my dulcimers on there. I have my CDs and MP3 downloads of my, some of my albums anyway on there from way back when. Uh, again, the Christmas one being the most recent one. And I also have another business called Solid Ground Stands, which is what this is, uh, building hardwood um, guitar stands, banjo stands, mandolin. I even have it stand now for a dulcimer, mountain dulcimer. Uh, we see one in the background there behind me. Uh, and that's kind of the, the take, my ticket out of the corporate world was the development of that stand business, and it's been doing pretty well. Um, and as I was able to get back into the woodworking, that got me back into building dulcimers again, which takes a lot more jigs and fixtures and lots of things to do with building dulcimers versus, versus say, a piece of furniture like a stand. But I'm enjoying it all. Some days I'm building stands, some days I'm doing dulcimers, some days I'm making music. <laughs> um, and enjoying it all, it's kind of all big, one big ball of wax. But it's pretty much me. I've got uh, my daughter Hannah helps me out in the business some uh, part time. And, and uh, my other daughter Mary has helped me in the past. And my couple sons have, my, my brother, uh, but no real employees. So it's really mostly just me uh, building. So anyway, just wanted a big plug for all that, I guess. Shameless plug. Um, but I thought I'd close with uh, this uh, Hannah's Hollyhocks. So I got tuned down to DG. A D D, excuse me, D G D D instead of D A D D. You get that string down to a G, it's kind of loose, so it, it it's easy to pull it sharp when you're playing. So if you ever do a lot of changing back and forth in tunings, that's that's what happens there. So hopefully this will get there. <laughs> anyway, I got to say I've enjoyed this. Uh, thank you again so much for having me on, and and uh, I'm looking forward to returning to uh, another aspect that I used to do a lot of was the teaching. Back then, of course, it was at festivals and then some local private students. But now with this whole Zoom setup and thing, it's wonderful. Um, I'll be able to start teaching some more. Um, I've got to kind of get my head wrapped around the things to teach and uh, the materials again, once again, the tablature and so on, um, and get that set up here pretty soon so that I can teach one-on-one, -on -one, I can teach uh, classes, I could do you know these virtual festivals that have come out since the pandemic, uh, like the Quarantine and others like that, that uh, I'm excited about getting into that format. So that'll be coming soon and hopefully some more recording. Oh, I also need to mention I have a YouTube channel called Tindall Music, uh, oddly enough. Uh, if you search YouTube, uh, look for Tindall Music there. I've been posting uh, demos of most of the dulcimers that I've built uh, so they can kind of hear what the instrument sounds like. It, it doesn't replace seeing it in person and hearing that in person, I know, but uh, but I've also been recording a number of uh, full songs and they're not, you know, CD quality perfect uh, takes, but uh, they're good enough for YouTube, I guess. I've uh, been getting a lot of views on that, a lot of uh, uh, comments there. That's been really fun to see that happen. Um, and hopefully we'll be doing some more of that here real soon, too, uh, with some more uh, songs. And this one will be one of those on there at some point. Um, Hannah's Hollyhocks. So, Pat, thank you so much again for having me. You're, wel it. you're welcome, Mark. It was delightful, really delightful. Thank you. I'll close here with uh, Hannah's Hollyhocks. It may take me a time or two to get into it, get back to the rhythm of it. Got a little more traditional sound. Uh,
Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Thank you so much. Hope we see you again. Yes. Uh, we'll cro we we'll cross paths, I'm sure. <laughs> Okay, I'll make sure around. you read make sure you read the chats cuz people are saying wonderful things about you. Oh, okay, you. thank you. I see that coming up here right now.